Welcome to the Trends Hub, your source for breaking news and trending stories from around the world. Breaking news, miracle in the desert. Scientists turn sand dunes into thriving fisheries. It sounds like a survival fantasy, but this is no mirage. Imagine standing at the edge of the Taklamakan Desert, the infamous Sea of Death, one of the harshest places on Earth. Now, picture shimmering ponds teeming with millions of fish right in the heart of this barren wasteland. This isn't just spectacle, it's a bold experiment that's rewriting what's possible in the world's most hostile environments. The mission was born from desperation and vision, to reclaim lost land, restore hope and ensure survival for entire communities. Turning a survival principle, water and protein, into a regional lifeline, this project transformed a barren wasteland into a source of life. At first, the world was skeptical. Fish in the Taklamakan? It sounded like a joke. But satellite images, videos and local stories proved it true. China had launched one of the most ambitious ecological engineering projects in history. They weren't just surviving, they were transforming the desert from the ground up. This is a story of courage, audacity and a plan so wild it bordered on madness. And against all odds, it worked. The impossible became reality. Let's dive into how they did it. To grasp the scale of this achievement, you need to understand the Taklamakan Desert. It's the world's second largest shifting sand desert. Over 337,000 square kilometers of relentless dunes. Its name means, you can get in, but you can't get out. For centuries, it swallowed cities and Silk Road caravans burying history beneath ever-moving sands. Temperatures swing from over 40 degrees Celsius in summer to below minus 20 degrees Celsius in winter. Rain is almost non-existent and the air is thick with dust. Life here is a struggle. Plants are thorny survivors, animals endure long droughts and humans cross quickly, never settling. The biggest challenge? Water. Or rather, the lack of it. Any moisture vanishes almost instantly, fueling the desert's relentless expansion. Desertification here is a creeping disaster, swallowing farmland and forcing people to abandon their homes. For those living on the edge, it's a daily battle for survival. Traditional defenses like planting trees were too slow and often failed. Something radical was needed, a weapon to not just halt the desert but reverse it. The question, what could possibly turn the tide? The answer would come from an unexpected place. Fish. When faced with an advancing wall of sand, most would plant trees. But Chinese scientists had a wilder idea, fight the desert with fish. The plan? Create massive aquatic ecosystems in the desert to change the land itself. Water would boost humidity, and fish waste would fertilize the sand, turning it into soil. This wasn't just about stopping the sand, it was about reclaiming land and creating jobs. The fish farms could feed people, create a new economy, and offer hope to communities on the brink. Of course the challenges were huge, where to get water, how to keep fish alive and how to build ponds in such a hostile place, but the potential reward, turning the sea of death into a source of life, was too great to ignore. It was a high-stakes gamble, backed by science and sheer determination. The next step, making it work in reality. The first hurdle was water. The Taklamakan is bone dry on the surface but deep below lies a vast, salty aquifer. This brackish water was useless for crops or most fish, until now. Scientists chose salt-tolerant species like tilapia, carp and shrimp, tough survivors that could handle the desert's extremes. The plan pumped brackish water into specially designed ponds where fish would thrive and enrich the water with nutrients. This nutrient-rich wastewater became the secret weapon, liquid fertilizer for the desert. The system had to be perfectly balanced, right salinity, optimal fish density, and just enough wastewater to revive the sand without causing harm. It was a carefully engineered ecosystem, built from scratch in one of the world's harshest classrooms. The theory was sound, but could it survive the real world? The only way to know was to try. The team prepared for the ultimate test. If it worked, it would be a blueprint for transforming deserts everywhere. If it failed, it would be a costly lesson. The stakes couldn't be higher. With the science in place, construction began, where theory met the brutal reality of the Taklamakan. Engineers built roads, braved sandstorms and dug massive lined ponds to hold the precious water. Millions of juvenile fish were transported across the desert in oxygenated tanks, a race against time and heat. Managing the ponds was a constant battle, evaporation threatened water levels, salinity spiked, and predators like foxes and birds arrived for a feast. Teams pumped new water, experimented with floating covers, and erected fences to protect the fish. Workers became desert fishermen learning to monitor water quality and manage complex irrigation systems. 
their resilience and innovation turned a construction site into a new kind of farm. This was more than a project. It was the birth of a new way of life. Every day was a fight against the elements, but their determination laid the foundation for an oasis in the sand. Soon the desert would begin to change. The first year was the true test, and the results were astonishing. As nutrient-rich water irrigated the dunes, barren sand darkened and green shoots appeared. Salt-tolerant plants like Salicornia took root, stabilizing the sand and halting the desert's advance. The new vegetation anchored the dunes, creating a living net that held the sand in place. This sparked a positive feedback loop. More plants improved the soil allowing even more life to flourish. Insects arrived, followed by birds and small mammals, an entire food web sprang to life. The silent desert was now alive with sound and movement. The ponds and plants even changed the local climate, raising humidity, cooling the air and reducing dust. There were reports of increased rainfall, a microclimate transformation. The project didn't just stop the desert, it began to reverse it. The impossible had happened, the sea of death was blooming, life had returned to a place once thought lost, the world took notice, and the impact didn't stop there. The ecological miracle sparked an economic revival. Fish farms became the heart of a new local economy, creating jobs and stability for communities once on the brink. Villagers became fish farmers, irrigation technicians and land managers, gaining skills and steady incomes. The project brought fresh food to a region where protein was scarce, and the newly fertile land produced vegetables and cash crops. Food security improved, and families could thrive instead of just survive. The desert, once a threat, became an asset. Communities began exporting food to other regions. People stayed in their ancestral homes, proud of their achievements. The project fostered hope, pride, and a sense of ownership. The desert was no longer a symbol of despair, but of opportunity. Fish in the desert didn't just change the land, they changed lives. The Taklamakan fish farms are more than an engineering marvel. They're a lesson for the world. They prove that even the harshest places aren't lost causes. With creativity and respect for nature, we can reverse environmental damage and build sustainable futures. The key was adaptation, using the desert's salty water, abundant sun, and resilient fish to create a circular self-sustaining system. Waste became a resource, and every element supported the others. This is the essence of sustainable survival. Work with your environment, not against it. The project is a testament to human ingenuity and humility. It shows that our greatest tool is our ability to innovate and adapt. The desert's transformation is a blueprint for hope, proving that no challenge is too great if we dare to think differently. The sea of death now blooms with life. The lesson, with courage and vision, we can turn even the most barren places into sources of abundance. The world is watching and learning. The desert's rebirth is a story we should never forget.